Whoa, what's up? We're back at the circus. It's our finest clown. What's your name? What'd you play? Uh, my name's Adam. I played uh, Centurion uh, at the uh, Missouri Regional. Uh, oh. got first place uh, undefeated. Oh, so I heard you're pretty new to this deck. When did you learn to play it? <laughs> um, so I started playing the deck on Friday, the day before the Regional. Uh, I, I had a good conversation with Lucas Sarko. Uh, so I got big up, big shout out to him. He, uh, he put me on the deck. This is like carve a card his list. Um, we had a conversation Friday. Uh, he walked me through some of the combos, uh, as well as some like the technical plays to do with the deck. And uh, then on the way there, I like rehearsed a few of the one card combos, um, just out loud on the drive. And round one was the first time I played this deck in a competitive tournament. Very interesting. Uh any, any notable matchups or anything you want to discuss before the deck performs? Um, I play a lot of tempo, I play a lot of mana, uh, which this deck's very good into. Because uh, a lot of decks are playing the, the chummy hand traps, which are obviously like a problem for the majority of the decks, whereas Centurion can kind of play through those. I think Pack highlighted that in his, in his video. So, um, yeah, playing mostly mana is good. Play a lot of tempo. Um, the deck can put up quite a formidable board against tempo, especially when they make you go first. Uh, so I did have that in my favor, uh, having played like about five tempo matches uh, throughout there. But yeah, only dropped two games uh, the entire tournament. Um, yeah, pretty good. Awesome. Well, let's see the deck then. All right. So uh, for the main deck, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I played uh, all the standard Centurion starters as well as the uh, the extra kind of like uh, engine requirements, being these four, and then Oath and Stand Up also serve as uh, as starters into it, and then Phalanx is kind of like the honorary card. Uh, these cards are pretty much all standard. You don't play the new one. Uh, it just doesn't really add much into the into the list. Uh, this is a consistency piece, so is this. Uh, and then the goo that I played, uh, what Lucas kind of put me on, uh, was specifically this package. So these four cards put in like a ton of work um, Ooh, over the week. set rotation. Yeah, so set, ro set rotation is uh, phenomenal. So being able to use this in the Tempi matchup is really good at like removing field spells. It did come up in the Snake Eye matchup as well as getting Temple off the field, which allowed me to go second with a bit of a bad hand. Um, and then these cards put in a ton of work. Um, a lot of times in like very simple game states, Fenrir is really strong. Uh, obviously for the, uh, for the hand traps, I do play Effect Veiler. Um, and so a lot of people don't know that this and this is actually full combo um, with the new oh. eight. Uh, so in some like very bricky hands, you, you can play through that. Um, I also play Psychic and Punisher uh, in the extra deck. So this with like an Ash Blossom uh, can simplify a game state very, very quickly by being able to use a Psychic and Punisher to kind of uh, play around Princess. If they have a Fire Monster on the field, you can battle over one, uh, banish itself from the other, and then special your, your Fenrir that you added off the first, which kind of puts you in a, like, a simpler game state, which this deck is, is really strong into. Wow. Um, so that's kind of like all of the engine cards. Makes it very strong into Shifters and Chummies. Uh, and then for non-engine, uh, again, built around the Shifter and Chummy setup, so cards that will always play uh, into those is, is going to be these. Uh, so I got Shifted a lot, and these cards are all good through Shifter. So I did play Mourner, it's also very good into the Snake Eye matchup, which I saw a lot of. And then Ogre, Vela, only two Nib. Uh, there is some math behind this, so the deck's at roughly around, I think, like 91% uh, like consistency to see uh, your combo starters. Uh, but you also draw a lot during your turn. Uh, so you do make a decision in this deck as you go through the combo piece to decide, uh, do I need to set up an Omni or do I need to draw into more combo pieces? And if you know your matchup, you can decide, like, if I'm going to draw, what's the likelihood that you're going to draw into these nib? The percentage actually does significantly increase if you don't see it with the amount of times you'll draw for your deck. Two on your turn, two on your opponent's turn, there's a high probability to see that. And then just two Bissiels. Uh, I think this is a little different to what a lot of people are doing um, with the deck where they were trying to uh, use the Lubellians. Um, I, can, I can't say I've ever played that list, so I don't know, but these didn't really come up a ton for me. Uh, I made Chaos Angel a few times, it's pretty cute, but other than that, uh, I don't think I'd ever up the count of Bissiels. Yeah, I heard uh, Veiling under Sangin summoning is really powerful for Magnemus effect. Yeah, uh, so I did have a matchup where I did have to throw a Veiler into the graveyard on a, on a Pydra uh, while uh, summoning was up so I could like Chaos Angel and banish that away. Um, yeah. It was a pretty interesting judge, judge call with the Tempi players, but uh, we resolved it quickly and uh, we were put them yeah. on. So you didn't know the Pydra's effect was negated, right? I did know that Pydra was negated, but you can, okay. uh, you can still Valor it. I just had to make, make sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, onto the extra deck, this one's super standard. Um, so you play two Legacia, you go into it, only one Auxilla. Um, this is like the god card of the deck. It's amazing. It, 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 it keeps you alive because you can special summon it with Phalanx. Uh, two Cosmic Blazer. This this is this card is incredible. Uh, being able to like return during the end phase and use your turn player priority to kind of like, keep bringing it back and then negating things in the end phase is really really strong. Uh, it does just make your grind game really really powerful. Uh, the weight into it. This is also really good. You can target your opponent's monsters as well. So uh, always be aware of that. Like if if uh, if they do go up into like a, a synchro eight, you can also go up into a synchro eight. 
Um, this card came up. Um, it's actually really cute. So um, if anyone's been in like one of those awkward game states with Tenpai where you attack, you don't want to attack three times to allow them to sort of get into a grind state, you can poke twice with these two. Uh, and then if they do have like two bodies or you are just able to special summon two bodies, you can then, uh, you can make this and just pop the, uh, the field, pump up this because this attacks higher. Uh, but you can pop the cards to, to deal that final bit of damage. Uh, I never made this pattern. I uh, made Chaos Angel quite a lot. It's really good to protect the synchros. Uh, made Psychic and Punisher a couple times. Uh, the two links uh, and Typhoon. Um, wow. This card actually came up a ton. Um, it's really cute if you sort of get like uh, like D buried and you want to just create some layers of interaction. I used it through to play through symbol art theme uh, a couple times, which was really really helpful. But yeah, I wouldn't change anything about the extra deck. Uh, main deck crop pretty sweet as well. Again, I'm not sort of like no expert with the deck, so uh, probably go to Lucas Sarko if you want to, if you want to find out more about the changes. Oh yeah, pay him money, please. <laughs> Um, for the side deck, uh, I did side the, the chummies. Um, when you see them, they're really, really good. Um, I do think there was a little, you know, against Snake Eyes, which I played a few, this was like a, you know, a god card into it. Um, sometimes it felt a little overkill with how much I was seeing, like I was almost seeing too many of these cards against it. Uh, this is very good in this deck because you can uh, use it as material to synchro if you kind of put Primera on the field. So it, uh, I really do like that sort of context with the cards. You can also play under macro uh, pretty well. So why did you decide not to main Fuelos? Um So yeah, that's an interesting concept. Uh, essentially, like a lot of good players know how to play around that um, by sort of like leaving you on enough interruptions. And the cards that you're drawing, um, like going second with Centurion, it's not really that great. Um, like it's really kind of hard to like break a lot of boards. Like I had one. Uh, uh, Snake Eyes matchup where all I saw were uh, with Centurion cards, and it was like incredibly difficult, even like forcing misplays to try and actually like break a uh, break a board. So you really want to stop your opponent versus like just letting them give you lots of draws. They seem to kind of like give you one or two, uh, and then they make this kind of like half board, and you and you kind of lose to that. Whereas cards like like Morna um, and Ogre and Baylor, they really like stop their opponent from even like putting a board up. So there's good map in this deck to kind of see about like three engine and two, uh, like two engine cards and three non engine. So having that and kind of just stopping them and not putting them on even like an interactive board, just like bodies on the field is much easier to play through. Okay. Um, I played two best deals. Um, these really d didn't really come in uh, all too much. These were just much, much better sides. Uh, maybe Cosmic Cyclone would be another good card to come in. It's sort of like this, de this deck's been gaining quite, quite a lot of popularity. Um, and then these four cards came in uh, a lot. These, uh -oh. these put in a lot of work. Um, so the lock with the deck essentially is you... You activate deck lockdown, you put Auxilla on the field, and then you also find a way to keep Primera in your back row. And so essentially this protects face-up cards and this protects your, your Auxilla. Um, it'd be kind of, it's kind of challenging to out, especially as you sort of like synchro summoning during that. You've got hand traps to kind of back it up uh, against a lot of like the Tenpai decks. <clears throat> that's a really difficult field to out. Obviously you have this as well. It's a bit of like a god card in this matchup. But, so yeah. you're telling me I can't even Lightning Storm that? Uh, you cannot lightning storm. You can't. Uh, you can't ride Geki, uh, the the monster away inside of that. You definitely can't chain a lightning storm to to ride Geki. Oh, okay. A common trend in the Sun Tenpai players, but yeah, you know, geniuses. <laughs> Um, All right. Anything yeah. else you want to say about the deck? Um, no, not really. I'll give a couple of shout outs. Um, first and foremost, like the, the D3, as you can see behind this, this is definitely like Woo! the the, uh, the best testing environment. You, you play meta. You, you play people trying to get ahead of the meta. Um, so it was very good having to prep for this. Uh, I'll give a shout out to Lucas Sarko again, the man behind this. I think he's one of the best brains uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh. Very, very calculative in his thoughts. Um, also very good at just sort of like uh, his convergent thinking to think ahead of the meta. Uh, so he definitely put me on this deck. I, I do get coaching from him. The spreadsheets, they're all, they're all good worth for the money. Uh, Kenny for traveling up with me, helping me work through the, uh, for the combos. And then, you know, just the usual folk for listening to my BS as I went through this deck. Brady, Jesse, Michael, just the whole group crew, 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 everyone else. But yeah. Oh. So, yeah, we did it. Finally got a win. Oops. We did it. <laughs>